Happy Monday, Thursday. Thanks for joining us as we partake of the Lord's Supper together tonight. I want to encourage you to participate, even whether you're by yourself or with a group or doing this over Zoom. Let's let this meal have significance and meaning for us. You can do that by embracing and engaging and entering in to the music we're about to sing and then the meal that we're going to partake of. You know, it's a powerful thing to think about someone dying for us, especially when we know we're not worthy of someone dying for. So would you join us and let's celebrate what this meal meant some 2,000 years ago and still has meaning for us today. Oh, the perfect Son of God in all His innocence for walking in the dirt with you and me. He knows what living is He's acquainted with our grief A man of sorrow, son of suffering Blood and tears, how can it be? There's a God who weeps There's a God who bleeds Oh, praise the one who would reach for me Hallelujah to the Son of Suffering. Some imagine you are distant and removed, but you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner you were grace and the broken. to God forever. Glory to God forever. 
My middle daughter, Sydney, is studying abroad this semester. And as a neat activity for our family, each month she has a card that each of us gets as different that asks us a question to ponder and reflect on. Keep us connected. We email her, talk to her on, over FaceTime, share our answer to the question. Well, my question this month was, what was your most significant day? It's kind of a broad question, but I, I pondered and reflected. You know, there's some easy answers to that question. My day I was married was significant day, big. Birth of each of my three children, big. <laughs> the day I started following Jesus was a big day. And it was interesting just to be able to share with her what those days were for me. As we enter into, at this point of Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, I wondered what Jesus would say to that question. What are the most significant days of your life? Well, resurrection, big, right? Good Friday, his death, big. Since he existed for all eternity, I would argue that he would say his birth was a big day when he became human. Maybe some others that might fit into this category, his baptism, the day he raised Lazarus. I think that near the top of that list for Jesus would be Monday, Thursday, this day, the significant moment where he introduced the new covenant for his people. Well, as we're in the midst of Holy Week, we're celebrating tonight Monday, Thursday. It's a strange word. It comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means command. It refers to the commandment Jesus gave his disciples to love one another. The two, two significant moments that happened in this evening, in this day, Monday, Thursday, was that Jesus washed the disciples' feet and he taught them how to practice the Lord's Supper or communion. Now the power of this meal is important. It's what we say is a sign and a seal. It's a sign because it pictures the perfect life of Jesus. The bread is the perfect life of Jesus. And the wine or the juice is a sign or a picture of the perfect death of Jesus, his perfect sacrifice. It is what brings salvation. It's what brings the forgiveness of sins and the ability to commune, hence why we call it communion, with Jesus. But it's not just a sign. It's also a seal. That means the bread and the wine actually bring blessings to us. They, they assure us and stir our faith. J.I. Packer, a famous author and writer, he said this, as the preaching of the word makes the gospel audible, communion makes the gospel visible. And God uses them both to stir our faith. On this significant day in Jesus' life, when he wanted his disciples to understand what was about to happen, he didn't give them a theory. He didn't give them a book. He gave them a meal. He gave his people a way of bringing the nourishing reality of his life and death into our lives. 
This meal, it's interesting, it should remind us of another meal. You see, the first meal mentioned in the Bible has some similarities. It was the meal in the garden with Adam and Eve. Satan came to Adam and Eve and said, is there anything wrong with this fruit? What, why is God is trying to keep something from you? And in that deception and in their rebellion, they took and ate. It's very specific language that we see there in Genesis chapter 3. But on Monday, Thursday, Jesus invites us back that what happened in the garden was because they took and ate, they were sent from God's presence. But now Jesus is back at a meal and back at the table and desires to have communion again and I think very purposefully uses the words, take and eat. Jesus reverses the words of the serpent in the garden and, and redeems those words now for you and for me to bring us home, to bring us back. So on this Monday, Thursday, let us em embrace the sign, engage with the seal, and enter into the presence of our sacrificial king. Embrace, engage, and enter. So Jesus, on the night before he died, the hour came when he reclined at the table and the apostles were with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they'd eaten, likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is poured out for you and is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Maybe you'd like to take a moment and pause in prayer now and reflect on the perfect life and the perfect death of Jesus. That invites us into a new meal, a new communion, and a new life. And maybe today, tonight, if you're with your group or with your family, to reflect it would be interesting to spend some time thinking about your significant days and just giving thanks to God for his presence in those moments. But let me conclude our time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and communion with you. In his name we pray. Amen.